Can I turn to uh, gene therapy for targeting the diseases of aging? Yes. And so can you talk about the benefits of using gene therapy as a mechanism to target the, the hallmarks as opposed to any of the other ways, which is perhaps, you know, like small molecules or other interventions? Right. So, um, and by gene therapies, I'm including here uh, um, antisense oligos, uh, messenger RNAs, mm -hmm. uh, CRISPR editing, and so forth. There's a broad set of, of nucleic acid-like molecules, PNAs. Mm -hmm. um, th the advantage of nucleic acids is they're easy to program. They are easy to go from a, a biological hypothesis, which these days is very often framed in terms of molecular biology or genetics, meaning mm -hmm. we know the molecules involved, we know the genes that make the proteins, so we know where to intervene. So it's easy to frame, it's, it's also easy to get targeted delivery, so you can put nucleic acids into, um, say, viral uh, capsids and target them for a particular tissue, um, and they will, they will go as broadly or as narrowly as you want them to be, uh, both by where you inject and, and what the uh, binding, surface binding components are. Uh, and, 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 this, and so the small molecules have the disadvantage that you might have a hypothesis that you want to in, inhibit uh, an autoimmune response or you want to uh, make a, a growth factor. You have to figure out, you have to like this very non-intuitive code that goes from a small molecule to those big molecules that you want to influence. Uh, mm -hmm. And I say, just why don't we just go straight to the big molecules? Because uh, the small molecules is very empirical. There's very little theory uh, um, until you've developed a lot of empirical knowledge. And then the theories are kind of minor tweaks on, on uh, old friends like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, metformin or rapamycin or something like that. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And bioavailability always seems to be a problem. <laughs> with small molecules. Right. So, so with some gene therapies, it can be once and done. Not, not right. all of them. Some, some of them, like messenger RNA and antisense oligos, they don't perdure, they don't last. Right. But, uh, but many of them do. Right. And I'm assuming, I do want to dive into that in a, in a second. So you did, uh, or your lab, your lab did a, a mouse experiment where you were doing some gene therapies and then you came up with a combination of five of them that oh, oh no you came up with a combination of gene therapies that counted five of the hallmarks of aging right, right. kind of in one go um, yeah. so can you talk a little bit about how you how you how you did that experiment and what the right. outcome was so it was uh so that, Sort of hallmarks, but also mm. diseases. It's, it, right. You know, it's, it, some of the hallmarks are, are fairly abstract and not uh, mm. necessarily diseases. But we wanted to have as our uh, criteria for success that we would hit multiple diseases that have very little in common with one other than age, aging. Mm. Because there are ways that you can change biomarkers of aging without actually achieving any physiological goals that you want. In other words, you can change the methylation state and you don't actually change the gene expression, and so you don't, uh, it doesn't affect aging. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was our, our goal. And it's now not five, it's more like eight. Uh, we keep extending it to other categories. Uh, but then the way we got the genes, so, so at the other end, so the one end is the assay, and at the other end is the, is the therapy, um, was we, we, we have maintained, we meaning Pedro de Magalas, uh, uh, was a postdoc in my lab and started a, a database of, for, for uh, animal aging and, and genes involved in aging. And we went through that database, the literature in a certain sense, looking for uh, genes that were convincingly involved and non-cell autonomous, meaning that they would, once you got them into a cell, it would, the, its impact would spread beyond that cell to adjacent cells or even to the whole body in a systemic way. And, uh, and that was important because at the time we started these experiments, and even to some extent to this day, uh, delivery is imperfect. Uh, it is, for aging, you would like to have every cell in your body be fixed genetically, 
Um, and the only, and there's and most uh, viral and non-viral vectors uh, are down in the you know single-digit percentages or worse uh, for for a lot of tissues. It, liver is easy, but but many tissues very hard. Um, and so we wanted to be able to have a limited effectiveness of delivery with a large um, amplification via non cell autonomous. And so we whittled it down from, you know, 300 genes in, in Jao Pedro's um, database down to 45 genes. We tested those in mice and then whittled it down further to three, and we tried every combination of those three and ended up and, and, and showed that uh, we could affect all five of these diseases in, in two, uh, two papers. Uh, and then, uh, and then use that to go to go into dogs, and then we'll be going from dogs into humans. But dogs was a nice um, milestone because uh, there is a market for dog therapies, that, and the, the FDA approval of dog therapies is a lot more cost effective. And so we could bring out a gene. We could undermine the notion that gene therapies have to cost a million dollars, which I've never been comfortable. I was not comfortable with the, the genome sequencing costing three billion, and I was uncomfortable with gene therapy costing a million. So we brought the cost of sequencing down to 300, and we want to do the same thing for uh, therapies. And so you can do that in a veterinary sense because the, the, num the size of the cohort for the trials is smaller, and the length of time is shorter. And, and, uh, so, and, but then if, if it works in dogs, which have a very similar sort of physiology, size, and environment to humans, um, then, then it helps um, make the case for moving uh, into the humans, if it works in mice, dogs. Mm. So the genes are, are, are generating hormones? Yeah, because they, they work somewhere localized, but they have a wider effect. Is, that was your aim, yeah. right? That's right. So, so they're, yeah, they're either hormones or they're hormone-like things. Sometimes they've been engineered to be a soluble form of a receptor. Um, so, so it's it's not something that's abundant in nature, but we can make we can make these things um, in a right. synthetic biology sense. We're not necessarily trying to exactly recapitulate the way we were when we were young. Oh, interesting. Yes. So, so you did mention that. You got five originally, and now it was eight. Um, and so, like, it, so these are these are diseases. Those these they're, they're not like the. So so there isn't like a limit of ten, right? There's ten hallmarks, but the diseases may be more. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you got that, but you are, are you still trying to increase that list of? Yes. Yeah, so so um, uh, the original list was uh, uh, cardiac failure, kidney failure, uh, type 2 diabetes, um, um, high fat diet, obesity, um, and then we added to those, oh, and uh, we added to that osteoarthritis was the fifth mm -hmm. one that we had added in a second paper. And then since then we've added mitral valve disease, which is a big uh, early killer in dogs, and um, uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So, mm -hmm. and uh, and then there'll be um, inflammatory, autoimmune, and uh, cancer that we'll add uh, soon. Um, so again, all these, these things have very little in common other than age-related. We want to get at the underlying mechanism rather than deal with one symptom of each of these diseases in a kind of case-by-case -case way, which is a very common way of dealing with uh, you know, modern drugs as we, we t talk about these as being com complex diseases or common mm. diseases and we, and we treat them in, in a, uh, you know, highly bespoke and, and individualized manner very often. Right. So I hadn't thought about that. So how many genes are you, so, so you, you're tackling like these nine d different diseases that you talked, eight different diseases you talked about. So how many, have, how many d genes are you are you editing? So, because that would imply that there's some underlying thing that you're fixing, rather than the correct. 
So yes. we don't know what the right number is. We know that right. the, 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 gene, the gene regulatory networks have loops in them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so if, if you, in principle, if you have like uh, five genes in a loop and, and it's, it's all positive, you could in, increase any one of those and you'll get the whole loop. So, mm -hmm. um, or, or in, a, in a more complicated network, uh, there are negative and positive uh, signals that you have to either take into account theoretically or empirically. So we don't know what the right number is. We don't know how sensitive it is to dose. Um, you know, we're preparing for worst case scenarios, but it, generally speaking, it, 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 a lot of these systems are easier to, to engineer than we thought they were, um, partly because biology is so uh, set up to be adaptive and, and regular. You just have to convince it that mm -hmm. it's a young cell and then it starts behaving like a young cell, and there's probably a whole variety of ways of doing that. In fact, it's relatively easy to convince them they're embryonic cells, like kind of the ultimate <laughs> in young cells. Right. Which is uh, another set of uh, gene therapies we developed, which were cell autonomous, not, not the, these kind of hormone-like ones that we're talking about. Well, I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.